Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna be discussing about organic medium versus inorganic medium when it comes to growing orchids. And this is a subject that I'm actually faced with a lot because of my setup, my inorganic setup. Obviously, people will point out that this is not natural and orchids cannot be grown like this because it's simply not natural. And this is something understandable in the comments of my videos, but I also see discussions on forums or other platforms where people defend organic mediums such as bark and sphagnum moss and all of that, and other people defending inorganic mediums such as even ceramis, leca hydrogen, and lava rock. And I am making this video because recently I have been pointing out that the source of my fusarium problems is actually the medium because the orchids are not adapted to this type of medium. And there is a constant in all of these comments that I see on my channel and also on forums and other discussions. And this is a lack of understanding of what natural and unnatural means. Now I see where this misunderstanding comes from. We live in a society where we are taught that organic is good, not organic is bad. We are all trying to be natural, healthy, organic, blah, blah. But there are certain areas of our activities where organic is not necessarily better than inorganic. And as it just so happens, orchid growing is one of those activities. So in this video, I will refer a lot to definitions. I will point them in my videos and also for everything that I say, you will find links down below with articles, definitions and all of that because I truly believe that definitions are forgotten and they're overwhelmed by this trend and the direction in which our society is heading. First things first, the most common idea that I see being specified in comments and discussions is that stuff like clay is not natural. Stuff like bark and sphagnum moss and all of those organic mediums are more natural. And that is one of the falsest statements you can have as an argument when discussing about this. So let me explain why. Now it's no secret that the vast majority of the orchids we grow are epiphytic and in their natural habitat they do grow attached to tree trunks and tree trunks have bark. Thus, a medium consisting of bark might appear natural to us, while a medium consisting of clay and other rocks might seem very unnatural. And I think people make this distinction because of that bio idea I was talking about. You know, bio is good, not bio is not good. Well, the truth of the matter is, both bark, sphagnum moss, coconut husk, and clay, lava rock, perlite, they are both just as natural. They are not man-made, they both derive from things in nature. For example, bark and sphagnum moss and coconut husk derive from trees and plants. Clay, lava rock and perlite derive from rocks and minerals that occur naturally in nature. It's not that one is synthetic and is man-made and the other one is provided by nature. No, they are both provided by nature and furthermore, they are both altered by humans. How are they altered? Well, humans tend to alter them shape-wise and structure-wise and integrity-wise so they better serve the purpose. For example, bark is chopped off into little pieces. It is also processed in a way so it lasts longer. Sphagnum moss is literally a dead and dried plant and coconut husk is the woody outer coating of a fruit. That's processed too, it is stripped from salts and tannins, which can harm orchids. So all of these materials are altered and intervened upon by humans. Clay as well, even though it's a naturally occurring mineral, it is processed by humans as well. It is made more porous, it is baked, and all of this to serve its purpose better. So one cannot be more natural than the other in this regard. The difference is, one is organic, the other one is not. But as I was saying, organic usually means good in our minds because of our society. But let's take a look at the definition of organic and see exactly what it is. So organic is something related to a living organism or a living entity, at least in this context. While inorganic doesn't have to do with something that lived or some say something that contains carbon, which is the building block of life, as you might have heard. So while bark and sphagnum moss and coconut husk are organic, meaning they derive from living things, bark derives from trees, pine trees, sphagnum moss is a dried dead plant, so it is a plant, and coconut husk is a shell of a fruit of a plant, they are organic. While clay and lava rock and perlite, they don't derive from living things, at least not directly, although they come from nature, they are not organic. 
Now the difference between organic and inorganic is that one is exposed to decomposition processes that have to do with carbon and microorganisms and bacteria which decompose carbon, while the other is not affected by organic decomposition processes. It is affected by degradation, erosion and other things, but not organic decomposition. So that is the difference between them. To sum it all up, one is organic, one is not. It doesn't mean one is better and one is worse. And it also doesn't mean one is more natural than the other. This being said though, I can see why some people assume that one is more natural than the other because orchids tend to grow on trees in nature. And one of the arguments that I see people who use inorganic medium have in response to people who say bark is more organic and more natural for orchids is that you cannot say that dead bark in a pot is as natural as living bark in a tree. I've seen this in a lot of discussions and I've also heard some experts say the same thing. The truth is, it's not really correct because one can easily point out that the bark on a tree is actually a layer of dead tissue. And if you check the definition down below of bark, you will see that is correct. So the bark you're using in your pot is pretty much just as dead as the bark on a tree. And if somebody says that to you, I'm not sure how you're gonna turn the discussion in your favor. What you should be saying is that bark on a live tree is maintained differently than on a dead tree. And again, if you check the Wikipedia article down below, you will see what I mean. A live tree maintains its bark in good condition, maintains its integrity, it protects it from decomposing really, really fast. Decomposition processes on a tree bark are excruciatingly slow. This is why you have trees for decades with the very same bark in very good condition. While the bark on a dead tree or a branch or a trunk will start to decompose and become mushy and unrecognizable in just a few years or even faster. Now there are some trees which shed their bark naturally, but orchids don't really go on those trees due to their nature, but we'll talk about the orchid nature further on in the video. Now this argument is absolutely valid when talking about sphagnum moss. And yes, sphagnum moss, as I was saying, the way we use it, is a literally dead and dried plant. Now you might already know that the vast majority of the orchids we grow are epiphytic. Some of them are terrestrial or semi-terrestrial, but the vast majority of them are epiphytic. And let's not forget the famous Phalaenopsis orchid. Most of us start with the Phalaenopsis when we grow orchids. But what does epiphyte mean? Let's refer to the definition. So I'm just gonna read it for you, but you can find the link down below in the description. An epiphyte is a plant that grows harmlessly upon another plant, such as a tree, and derives its moisture and nutrients from the air, rain, and sometimes from debris accumulating around it. That is a definition of an epiphytic plant. And our orchids are just that, epiphytic plants that grow on trees. What orchids are not, or at least most of them are not, are parasitic, meaning they don't take anything from their host plant or tree, and also orchids are not saprophytes. Now this is a term we don't normally use, but I notice from discussions that many people do believe orchids are saprophytes. So let's see what this means. Saprophyte is a plant, fungus, or microorganism that lives on dead or decaying organic matter. What this means is that saprophytic organisms actually do process and take food from their medium directly. Orchids are not that because they rely on other microorganisms to decompose organic matter for them so they can obtain the end result of that decomposition process. And this is what we usually call plant nutrition. What they don't do is perform this process themselves. So at this point, we cannot say that orchids rely on the surface they are attached to because they're epiphytic. They're not parasitic and they're not saprophytes. Now, if you check the link below about saprophytes, you will see there are actually a few species that are kind of saprophytic, not really. Check it out below, but of course, none of the orchids we grow are those orchids. So knowing that about our orchids, we can draw some really important conclusions. Since orchids do not draw anything from their host plant, we cannot say they rely on that type of food. So they don't really rely on the type of tree necessarily because orchids can grow on various types of trees. Also, because they're not saprophytic, they don't rely on decomposing that bark themselves. And if you think about it, the bark really doesn't decompose all that fast, so they get nothing from that bark. So this tells us that the actual bark itself, its surface, 
and its chemical composition does not matter for the orchid. So bottom line, the type of bark that orchids grow on doesn't have anything to do with their nutrition and their life. It has to do with other aspects. Remember I was telling you that some trees shed bark naturally? Well, as I was saying in a previous video, one of the functions of the roots is to anchor the orchid on the tree so it doesn't fall. If an orchid manages to land on a tree with shedding bark, the orchid will shed along with the bark and it will probably die. So you will probably not find orchids attached to trees that have shedding bark. You will find orchids attached to trees that maintain their bark in good condition. The bark decomposes excruciatingly slow and that provides a good environment for our orchid to develop. And if we're still not convinced that the type of bark or surface our orchid grows on doesn't really matter when it comes to feeding purposes, let us think of lithophytic orchid. Now, lithophytes are derived from epiphytes, meaning they are attached to a host, but in this case, the host is not a plant or a tree, it is a rock. One of the most famous orchids that is a lithophytic is the Dendrobium kingianum. And of course, there are quite a few crosses from that orchid. But if you check where orchids come from, you will find those orchids that are found in nature both on trees, but also on rocks, depending on the elevation and the type of environment they have. So again, this tells us that the actual surface an orchid grows on doesn't really matter because it does not feed the orchid in any way. It just provides a good environment for the roots to develop and anchor the plant. So of course this surface, even though it does not provide nutrients by itself, it doesn't feed the orchid in any way, does have to meet some requirements. Well, first of all, it must not be toxic to the orchid. Some plants or trees do release toxins and some toxins can be detrimental for orchids. Also, through the composition, the medium becomes very acidic and it's easy to burn orchid roots. Excessive amounts of decomposition chemicals can indeed be toxic to orchid roots. Also, the surface upon which an epiphyte orchid clings to needs to provide aeration as well as moisture. It doesn't necessarily have to hold on to that moisture for days and days, but there has to be some type of moisture or water. And on a tree trunk, it's easy to obtain moisture because of rain. Also on a rock, it's the very same thing, but both a rock and a tree trunk can dry out very fast due to ventilation. Since they are above the soil, they are exposed to air movement, winds and all of that. So in this regard, a rock and a tree are pretty similar. Even though one is organic, the other one is inorganic. Can orchids live both on trees and rocks? Well, nature tells us they can. What can we draw from here? Well, we can say that the surface upon which orchids grow doesn't matter as long as it meets some requirements, such as it's not toxic, it provides moisture, it provides ventilation. Furthermore, we are also different. We have different environments, different climates, way of growing orchids, and many of us use different types of mediums with our orchids with great success. Some people grow orchids in bark and it works just fine. Some people use sphagnum moss or even coconut husk while others use lava rock, or combinations with perlite, or as I'm using, ceramics and leca. Do we all have success with orchids? Well, arguably we do, because orchids are epiphytic, one, they are not parasites, second, and they're not saprophytes, third. So the medium they grow in absolutely does not matter. All it has to do is to offer a place for the orchid to anchor itself and also offer moisture and ventilation. So unless you grow your orchid in its natural habitat on a tree that you have in your yard, in the natural habitat of your orchid, you cannot really say you are growing your orchid naturally, no matter how much you try. But that's not the point. Of course, we refer to nature and their growing habitats to provide the best external factors for orchids. But it doesn't mean we have to go all natural on it. Because luckily for us, we are free to use whatever we can to grow our orchids as long as we provide those things that they need. Meaning moisture, ventilation, a non-toxic surface for them to grow on, and of course nutrients. Because many of us don't have naturally occurring poops in our orchid pots. And that's a little joke, but yeah, that's where orchids get their fertilizer from. So in the end, it does not matter how you grow your orchid. Some people grow them in cork wine. Some people attach them to fences. It absolutely does not matter as long as it is a good environment for them to grow on. But when it comes to something is more natural than other, 
Well, in my opinion, that debate is absolutely pointless, but that's just for you to decide and for you to research. And I hope you will take the decisions after you research and see exactly what stuff mean, what they refer to, how orchids grow, and understand the nature of your orchids. And that is the key to actually growing them well, understanding them. And I hope these little aspects and these discussions that I make will at least give you some ideas of what to research about and find other related topics and overall have a better experience with growing orchids in a home or wherever you grow your orchids. So alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchid and plants videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you get notified each time I post another video. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Don't you even dare lose buds. It's always scary with the ranges because as the buds mature, they get a little bit whiter and I'm afraid they're gonna blast, but don't you dare, okay?